good day everyone. My name is Dr. Joseph Griffin, a vascular surgeon from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We're going to talk to you today about a case that we performed using the Phoenix Atherectomy System as well as the intravascular ultrasound IVIS system as well. This is a 53-year-old male referred to us for critical limb ischemia consisting of right second toe gangrene in which he has a history of previous tobacco use as well as diabetes, hypertension, and end-stage renal disease currently on dialysis. He also has a known right popliteal to posterior tibial artery bypass with SFA angioplasty. In order to perform a proper evaluation, the patient underwent non-invasive peripheral arterial studies consisting of ABI and arterial ultrasound of the affected limb. The non-invasive peripheral ultrasound revealed uh, severe stenosis of the previous angioplasty of the right superficial femoral artery, but also an occluded bypass as previously mentioned and also a chronic total occlusion of the posterior tibial artery. Due to these findings and the patient's clinical presentation, we elected to perform an angiogram to gain a further understanding of the disease present and also to evaluate for possible repeat bypass versus tibial atherectomy. The initial angiogram demonstrated a severe lesion in the patient's right superficial femoral artery. Further investigation of the lower anatomy demonstrated a total occlusion in the patient's posterior tibial artery as well as previous bypass. These findings confirm the initial non-invasive ultrasound findings. Based off the initial angiogram, we elected to attempt a superficial femoral artery and posterior tibial artery atherectomy using IVIS guidance since his previous bypass has failed. To gain a further understanding of the disease process, as well as length of lesion, vessel size, and any other abnormalities we elected to use IVIS. The initial IVIS pullback provided us with the added information that assisted in determining a few things. The first is the type of plaque present. In other words, does the plaque have luminal calcifications versus medial calcinosis? If luminal calcification is not present, then there is a reduced need to utilize an atherectomy device that deals with luminal calcium. In 2010, uh, there was a study entitled Evaluation of Peripheral Atherosclerosis, a Comparative Analysis of Angiography and Intravascular Ultrasound Imaging. The study demonstrated that moderate to severe calcification occurred in 40% of patients by angiography, but only 7% by IVIS. In regards to this specific lesion, there was minimal calcium identified. There was a 90% restenotic hyperplastic lesion with a chronic non-flow limiting dissection. As noted, the dissection did not appear on angiography. The second characteristic is the length of the lesion. Is there a normal segment of the vessel proximal and distal to the lesion? If not, where is the largest lumen distal and proximal to this lesion? Also, size of the vessel. If it is normal, both proximal and distal to the lesion. If there is diffuse disease throughout the artery, then what is the size of the largest lumen both proximal and distal to the lesion? The reason to perform this assessment is so that you do not get over, overly aggressive with your balloon or other adjunctive therapy, which has been demonstrated by the L Levant II substudy, Utopia study, and other studies to have a negative impact on outcomes. As you can see, the largest vessel diameter was 6.5 millimeters with no adventitial disruption from previous angioplasty. Due to the additional information obtained from IVIS, we decided that the appropriate therapy for the patient would be Phoenix atherectomy, followed with a 6.0 by 60 millimeter Lutonix drug coated balloon. As you can see here, we used the tapered Phoenix 2.2 millimeter by 130 centimeter device. The Phoenix atherectomy device allowed me to perform one continuous debulking run without the need to remove the device from the sheath. Furthermore, due to the unique characteristics of the Phoenix atherectomy device, we were able to do a few things. We were able to cut the plaque safely. We were also able to cap capture the debris and clear the debris continuously. Again, all of this was accomplished with a single insertion of the device. After the debulking run was completed, we immediately performed an angiogram to check for any major complications that could be discerned from the angiogram. As you can see, we did not have any major abnormalities. However, the post atherectomy angiogram could have been easily supplemented with just an IVIS assessment, 
especially if the patient has renal impairment. Despite how well the angiogram looked, we knew there was a previous chronic dissection identified with IVUS. Therefore, we decided to use a drug-coated balloon in the segment with potentially having to place a stent. Here we demonstrate using a 6.0 by 60 millimeter Lutonix drug-coated balloon performed post-Phoenix atherectomy. We decided not to use a 7 millimeter drug-coated balloon to hopefully avoid worsening the chronic dissection. Here we demonstrate how well our therapy performed by using IVUS imaging. The before IVUS image shows you a 90% stenosis of the SFA with chronic dissection. The after therapy IVUS imaging demonstrates adequate luminal gain using Phoenix atherectomy with drug coated balloon angioplasty. The post IVUS assessment also provides us with the information that no flow limiting dissections or vessel injury is seen. Data such as the Utopia trial has demonstrated that if vessel injury is observed, then the rate of restenosis increases from 15% to 96% with a p-value below 0.001. This speaks to the importance of avoiding adventitial injury and identifying adventitial injury when it does occur. Final angiogram perform confirms the post-intervention IVUS findings consisting of minimal residual stenosis. Now that the superficial femoral artery lesion has been treated successfully, we elected to focus on the chronic total occlusion of the posterior tibial artery. The below knee angiogram demonstrates poor tibial vessel runoff with collateral perfusion to the foot. Based off the angiogram, our initial thought process for therapy was to cross the chronic total occlusion and perform IVUS assessment with attempt to perform an atherectomy. Again, our reason for using IVUS was already mentioned earlier in this presentation. Due to the vessel size and lesion characteristics, which did consist of moderate calcified disease, we thought the Phoenix 1.8 millimeter by 149 centimeter atherectomy device with post balloon angioplasty would be appropriate for this patient. As you can see here, the Phoenix 1.8 millimeter by 149 centimeter device was able to advance successfully without any difficulty in which we were able to cut, capture, and continuously remove plaque. IVUS in conjunction with the angiogram immediately post Phoenix demonstrated a few things which were center mass cutting without adventitial injury nor having any flow limiting dissection. A 3.0 by 120 millimeter rapid cross balloon was used post Phoenix atherectomy to dilate the lesion. The balloon size and length was based off the initial IVUS assessment. As you can see, the angiogram post atherectomy and balloon angioplasty demonstrated a great result with increased perfusion to the foot with no angiographic evidence of distal embolization. So how did IVUS and Phoenix atherectomy not only benefit the patient, but also our therapeutic procedure? The Phoenix atherectomy system provided us a center mass cutting device that assisted in avoiding adventitial injury or flow limiting dissections. Furthermore, the unique design allowed for cutting, capturing, and clearing debris with only one insertion. IVUS, in this case, provided an adjunctive tool to angiography that assisted in determining vessel size, plaque morphology, completeness of therapy, and identified a previous chronic dissection that was not visualized on angiography. In regards to the patient's 
clinical scenario, his second toe on the right foot that was gangrenous has completely healed at a two-month follow-up clinic visit.